Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Inflatable Hamster Wheel, which is an inflatable hamster wheel. So that's what I'm being promised here is an inflatable hamster wheel, and thankfully, that's what this mod delivers. So aside from watching this thing bounce up and down and up and down, what else can you do with it? Well, you can take most of the cars in the game and you could drive them inside of it. So we're going to go ahead and grab this D-Series and do just that, and you'll see it's a little bit of a tight fit, but it does fit, and then once you're inside of it, you can accelerate and get this thing moving up to decent speeds. So let's go ahead and try to get this thing up to about 50 miles per hour. And you'll notice it does take a little bit longer to accelerate inside of the wheel versus just driving on the regular pavement. But we are now up to almost 50 miles per hour. There we go. So you can kind of just slide on off of it and the wheel will keep on rolling. So our next goal is to stop right in front of it and get ran over by the wheel. So that looks like a pretty good spot. We're going to get the slow-mo on and have the whole thing in the frame of the camera. And there you go. That's what happens if you get ran over. Truthfully, not much happened to the truck. The wheel, though, it got disrupted. It's kind of like lost all of its momentum and is barely moving. But the good thing is, is you can hop right back into it. It looks a little bit violent. But once you're inside of it, you can get it back up to speed and do more things with it. So let's go ahead and get this thing back up to 50 miles per hour again. And it is kind of funny watching this thing accelerate because you got sparks flying all over the place as you accelerate in this thing, even though it doesn't really look that violent once you actually get moving so there we go we're at about 50 miles per hour so we can hop out of that and then this time we're gonna drive into it as it's rolling so we get some slow-mo going and then watch this the car is actually able to eat the whole wheel i figured it kind of bounce it in the air at first but no it actually goes over and it stops it pretty much dead in its tracks like it has a little bit of momentum after that but not much and then when the wheel is immobilized and you crash into it, then it'll actually kind of bounce off of you like you would expect it to do. So, about 50 miles per hour with the car, very few miles per hour with the wheel, and there we go. It goes up and over the truck. It doesn't really fly that high, but it doesn't go under it like it did last time. And it's actually going to land on its side this time. Nope, maybe? Yeah, that is on its side. So why don't we try hitting it on its side? I haven't done that before. I have no idea what's going to happen. We'll try it two ways. First one, we'll just clip it barely, and the next one, we'll hit it right in the middle. So just flipping it a little bit. It just kind of, it just jukes out of your way, basically, it looks like. It's like, I did nothing to it, even though I just smashed into it at such a good speed. So we're going to go a little 180, and then I went right in the middle. Let's see. Is it going to actually do some damage to this thing, or is this going to bounce off again? Well, it's hitting it hard, but it's too flexible. It just bounces away, saying, you can't hurt me. But the real question is, can I get you back upright? purely by luck and it looks like the answer for that is going to be no so i'm going to just go ahead and reset the truck and reset the wheel and for the next thing i want to do we need two vehicles and one wheel so let's grab another vehicle this one is going to be an etki series and we're going to go with the rally gravel edition because the extra ground clearance and all-wheel drive makes it easier to get inside of the wheel you can get into the wheel using some of the lower rear wheel drive versions but it's a bit more difficult because you have to wait for the wheel to get to its lowest point and then you have to really drive on it at the perfect time. But with the gravel one, it's real easy. Now, I need a car that will work as a ramp. So we're just going to go ahead and grab a bolide. And we'll get the fancy version of the bolide because why not? And what we're going to do with this is we're just going to drive it right in front of the wheel. And we're going to drive over this car using the rally version of the ETKI series, which is something you normally would not be able to do. But thanks to the power of the hamster wheel, that should be possible. I'm taking it nice and slow, and there we go. Look, we're climbing right over them that easy. Although we do need some power to keep going if you stop midway through, we have the power, and we are able to go completely over it without much difficulty. And if you look at the bolide, I don't see a scratch on it. It looks flawless. What about my car? Is it still in good condition? Let's get it out of the wheel, and uh, we got a little bit of damage on the bumpers and the underside of the vehicle, but really overall, there is not that much damage on this vehicle. And hey, wheel, where are you going? Stop rolling. You can't be rolling away because I need two wheels side by side, which means we don't need the vehicle so we can get rid of them. Then we can clone the wheel that we have. And then we're going to open up the tuning menu. And you'll see in there we have two options. They're both labeled as pressure, which is kind of confusing. The first one is exactly what you would expect it to be, though. It's the pressure inside of the wheel. So you can increase that to make it more inflated. And you see it does make it stiffer because if we reset both of them at the same time-ish, you'll notice one of them really bounces up and down. The other one seems to act like a little bit more of a solid object. 
So what does the other pressure do? It's actually the rigidity of the wheel. So if we increase both of these, we have a wheel that's almost a solid object. It's that strong. And then if we did the exact opposite on the other one, which is reduce both of them, it's flat. It just goes way down and it really doesn't recoil back at all. So you can really customize this wheel to whatever settings you want to have a lot more fun with it. But really, the default setting is pretty versatile, so you don't really need to change it up, but you do have that option if you so desire. Now, the next thing I want to do requires some water, and there's no water here, so we're going to go over to the port. And I want to go to the beach. The funny thing is, though, there's not an easy way to get to the beach. If you look around here, we're actually blocked in. Sure, you could just go and teleport the truck over there. That works perfectly fine. But why don't I show you one of the legitimate ways to get to the beach? The first thing you want to do is drive very far away from the beach. You want to drive all the way over to here most of the time, unless you have a faster car. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hit this first jump, land it on the next one. And then we should be able to just fly right here over to the beach. That worked perfect. Do you get a little bit of damage on your vehicle? as you can see right here. But if that's a problem, well, you can just go ahead and reset the vehicle and then boom, the damage is gone. And we'll start off by just letting the wheel roll right into the water. I think there's enough of a hill right here for it to do that. So spawn it up. And then we want to use the camera that's not attached to the wheel because the camera that's attached to the wheel can be a little bit hard to watch. So here we go. It hits the water and it goes right over it. It looks like the water is a solid object. It goes over it so easily. It's Quite a magnificent thing to watch, and it's going to crash into this pillar over here eventually, so let's see what it does when it hits it. I actually don't know what's going to happen for sure here, and not much. It kind of just bounces off of it, and it stopped. So let's just reset it, and they're going to bring it back up the hill a bit so we have time to drive a car inside of it, and I'm going to want a car that's a little bit on the lighter side, so we're going to go with an Ibishu Miramar, and then we just back it on up, and we'll get into the wheel, which has apparently decided it wants to be flat now. That's not acceptable, so we'll just see if resetting it fixes it, and it does. I don't know what it was doing there. And then once again, we're going to try to drive this thing into it, which can be a little bit difficult at times with the car. It's just rear-wheel drive because getting traction can be a pain, but we got on it without too much difficulty. And then let's go a little bit faster towards the water, and there we go. We are now on the hamster wheel boat, the inflatable hamster wheel boat, I should say. And we're going to bump the wall a little bit. We shouldn't get much damage because it looked like it just mostly bumped the hamster wheel. Now, I'm trying to drive right here, but it doesn't do anything. We can't get enough traction to spin the wheel anymore, so it just spins the tires, which is kind of unfortunate. I do wonder what will happen, though, if we actually try to spin the wheel in the water. That is something I have yet to try, so what we'll do is we'll swap out this car for one that can actually get some traction. So it's just something with four-wheel drive. The rally version of the Ibishu does have four-wheel drive, so that should work well. And we bring the wheel back. And then all we have to do is get the vehicle into the wheel. That looks like it could be lined up decent enough. Let's see. Yeah. It's easier to get into the wheel when you have a car with four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive just because you can always get some traction. And we can go like 20 miles per hour into the water and let it just float across. Excellent. We are officially a boat again. So let's see what happens when you accelerate a little bit. The wheel does still spin. And I really didn't expect that. I figured it would just kind of like contort itself and it would fall off immediately. But no, look at this. We don't have any control over the direction or anything, but we can move the wheel around, which is pretty nifty. Now, how about this? We're just going to go ahead and floor it as long as we possibly can, see if anything happens. And no, it actually did kind of contort from under me once we got it spinning fast enough. That's what I thought would have happened at a lower speed. It just took a little bit for it to happen. And look at the wheel goes. It spins around right here. All right, enough of that. Bring the wheel back, bring the car back. And we're going to swap the car for a big truck. Now, this thing is so big, you can't actually fit in the wheel the way I've been doing it before. So we got to put the wheel on us like a water wing on an arm, basically. That's what we're going to be doing. So we'll park the truck right in front of the water. And then we're going to grab the wheel and we're going to teleport it to the water. And we're going to have to, well, I guess we're going to have to teleport it because it got here on its own. You just save this spot. And then somehow we got to line it up where the truck can drive into it. So I'll try grabbing it right here and save it right there so it doesn't have all that momentum. Still kind of bouncing all over the place, but I think this will work. I just got to bring it to the beach and it'll be a little bit more stabilized. All right, save the spot. And then we should be able to drive the truck right into this thing. But I want to add a snorkel to the truck real quickly because I'm afraid the front of the truck might get submerged while I do this. I have no idea exactly what's going to happen here. So just a little bit of a precaution. And then here we go up onto it. 
Was the snorkel yet necessary? So far, the answer is yes, it was. Although, uh-oh, we actually need a bigger snorkel because we are completely submerged. Maybe the truck is too heavy. So I'm going to try pulling the truck a little bit farther and see how much does this thing sink? Oh, yeah, it sinks all the way down. Actually, it doesn't sink all the way, maybe? It looks like we might be able to get it where the truck floats in the water, but half of the thing is going to be under the water here. Yes, yeah, so about half is underwater at least. The truck is not touching the ground, though. So here is a curiosity of mine, then. If we were to go ahead and reset the wheel and then change the pressure to a higher pressure, will that actually make it float? It makes sense that increasing the pressure would make it float, so let's see if it works. Well, <laughs> increasing the pressure does make it harder to go onto it because it's more of a solid object that wants to fly away from you, so I'll just teleport the truck onto it and give it a little bit of gas, try to get it going. All right, yeah. I think it is staying up higher in the water. It's kind of hard to tell because it looks like the rear end is touching the ground maybe just a little bit. So we'll pull the truck forward just a few feet. And then you can clearly see truck is not touching the ground, but we are higher up in the water. Before we were completely submerged. Now we're only half submerged. And that means the front half of the vehicle is good to go. So we can rev up the engine. Doesn't do much, but we can do it. We could even lock the differentials if we wanted to, but... I don't really know what it'll do. Oh, I saw the tire actually move right there. Maybe we could get some traction on the wheel. Oh, goodness. Oh, this is bad. I've only made things worse. Well, we've officially killed the truck and ruined the wheel. Ooh, you see the wheel popped up like that? That gives me a fun idea. Let's try putting the wheel way under the water and see if it pops up with a lot of force or not. So come on, wheel, bounce. Whoo! It did have a lot of vertical speed, but it had a lot of side-to-side -side speed right there. It actually just flew into there. All right, enough of that. I want to get this truck floating on the water without it sinking all over the place. And I think the best way to do that is to attach two wheels together. So let's see if we can do that. We're going to clone the one we have so they both have the same PSI. And then we're going to put the other wheel right next to the one we already have. And I want to try to connect them. And I think maybe a little bit of slow-mo might make this easier because they like bouncing and moving all over the place. So I want to grab uh, this one right here and connect it to right there. That looks like it should be a good spot. So we full speed this and they connect. Okay. Like they weren't supposed to go like that. I wanted them to be at the other orientation so we can fix that by connecting it in another spot. Hopefully that's about level. Let's see what it looks like once they're actually connected. That looks pretty good. Might not be perfect, but it's close enough. It made... What well, looks like a giant hamster wheel now. So we can go ahead and try to put the truck into it, but it's spinning all over the place. So I got to time this right. I got to put the slow-mo on, try to make it stay straight right there. And then we're going to go ahead and just teleport the truck into it while it's lined up properly. And that looks pretty good. The heaviest D-Series we got can be held up by just two wheels that are highly inflated. That's pretty nice. Now, the only thing is I have no idea what to do here. I mean, we could just go ahead and floor it, I guess, but... <laughs> Yeah, all that does is push the wheels away. Didn't do anything very useful, although it is moving with pretty good speed. All things considered, it shot off. All right, bye-bye, hamster wheel. You go do whatever you do. I really don't know what you're doing. Uh, what I want to do next, though, is go to a different map. I want to go to Utah, USA, where there's barely any water at all. And what I want to do here is I want to try off-roading inside of the inflatable hamster wheel. I truly have no idea what's going to happen here because this is the dumb idea I thought of about five seconds ago. It's probably going to go really poorly, but we got to try it and see what happens. You know the wheel can get you over a car, but can it get you over a bumpy terrain? I think the answer is going to be no because I don't think it'll do as well with the bumps versus a nice solid object. But here we go. We're going to find out. I have no idea what speed is ideal for this. And oh, right off the bat. Okay, so the rock went through the wheel. That is not what I expected to see. If that becomes a common occurrence, this will not work too well. Also, driving on a slope like this does not work well at all because it constantly wants to push you out of the wheel and you're just trying to stay inside of the wheel. But it looks like it's kind of working as long as we can stay inside of it. It's just too difficult to do that from this angle. So why don't we go to a slightly ladder area? I think that might work. So we're going to go ahead and just drown the truck. And then teleport it all the way over to here. Got a nice flat area in every direction. We'll teleport the wheel over here as well. We'll reset the wheel and <laughs> apparently it decided to go flat again. So we'll reset it again. And now we got to try to drive the truck into the wheel. So let's just slide on it. Got to go opposite direction again here. I don't really think it makes a difference, but there are arrows to tell you which way to go if you really care about that. 
and we can go up this hill without too much difficulty, but I do see some big rocks right there. If we hit those, I'm pretty sure we would have been stopped. We barely got by them, though, it feels like. Continuing along, here's some more rocks. What's going to happen this time? Oh, yeah, it seems like it just clips right through the rocks and you have to actually have a vehicle that can go over the rocks. But in terms of bumpy terrain, it can go over that no problem. Just the rocks really do destroy its abilities. I mean, we're stuck basically because of those rocks, so nothing else we can do. Time to move maps, this time to grid map. And I want to do some crash testing here to see how well this thing works as a cushion for collisions. So I'm going to spawn up a nice small Ibishu hopper, and then we're going to also spawn up a wheel right next to it. And the idea is we're going to put the hopper inside of the wheel and then crash into it and see what happens. So there is the wheel, spawn that up, and then hopper goes inside a wheel. I chose the hopper because it's just a nice, small, easy to use vehicle. So into the wheel, super easy. Stop it right there. And then we're going to want to hit it pretty hard. So we're going to swap out this truck for something bigger and heavier. Not super big and super heavy, but bigger and heavier. We're going to go with the H45 Ambulance, which is on the big side, but it's not as big as some of them T-Series. This is way, way more. So we should be able to get this thing up to about 60 miles per hour with not too much distance. And then we're going to smash it in the hopper and see what happens. All right, well, maybe not 60 miles per hour, but we'll be close if we start doing a U-turn right here, I think. Depends how much speed I can maintain doing the U-turn. Probably not enough. It's going to be about 50 miles per hour, maybe 55, but no 60. All right, ready for impact. Slow motion on. Getting surprisingly close to 60, all the way up to 57. So smashing into the back of a hopper. 57 miles per hour with a cushion. That is what it looks like. Now, let's try that again with a hopper that doesn't have a cushion. So we're going to go ahead and clone the hopper right there. And we're just going to move it over to the same-ish spot. Looks like it was about right here based on the piece just sitting there. And we'll grab the ambulance again and do the same thing as last time, but we won't drive this time. Instead, we'll just teleport it because it's damaged anyway, so it has to be reset. So why not reset it over here so it's ready to go? So the goal speed here is 57 miles per hour, and oh my goodness, that's the hopper. I thought that was the ambulance causing the glitchiness. So yeah, that is a little bit of a mess. Also, we're going to hit them crooked. I got to fix how crooked they are real quickly. And then back to the ambulance in time, hopefully. Slow it down just a bit. We got to hit 57 miles per hour. That's pretty close. So let's see, is the damage between the two different or about the same? Um... Looking at the two, it does not seem very different. They seem very equally damaged. What I'm going to do real quickly is I'm going to save the damage on this one just in case it gets reset when I teleport it because that does sometimes happen. We'll put it over here next to the other one. It did not get messed up. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? I, I have no idea what's going on, but this is very interesting. This is very interesting. I have never seen this before. Huh. That was weird. So I saved the damage on this, right? Let's see what happens if we bring it back and then reset it. So I'm going to bring it all the way back to here. Is it going to keep pulling? All right, it's done now. But what if we load the damage? No, it's not pulling. That is weird. Something about that collision just caused a complete disaster. Now, the goal here was to see, is the damage different with the extra cushion? And I would say, actually, you know what? It almost looks like the cushion made it worse, doesn't it? Maybe it's hard to tell. Maybe there was something glitchy with the collision that caused it to look a lot worse because that seems significantly worse to me. Because, like, you got this thing damaged all the way into the rear seats and stuff. And it looks like all the way up to here, even a little bit on the door area. But over here, you got damage maybe about up to the door area as well on that side. But this side looks so much better. I think I was getting deceived because we hit it a little bit off center. Either way, it did not seem to do much to make the collision any better. But what if we increase the PSI? Because I guess we could try that as well. So I'll make it maximum PSI. But we're not going to increase the rigidity of it because I don't want it to become like a solid protector. I want it to be a squishy protector. I'll move it over to here and then I'm going to put it onto its side this time because it's hard to drive a vehicle into there and I don't actually see my mouse cursor. Don't know what's going on there. There it is. So as I was saying, we're going to put it 
onto its side and it can be kind of hard to grab because it wiggles and jiggles so much. There we go. So now we're going to grab the hopper that got obliterated. We're going to put this thing inside of the wheel and we're going to see if it makes a difference this time with the extra inflation. So we reset the ambulance and we are off. And hopefully once again, we'll hit about 57 miles per hour. I mean, it's as long as it's in that range, 55 to 60, that's good for me. It looks like we're going to be in that range. We actually might be just at 57 if I can hold it right. Basically at 57, there is the impact. And it might be less, actually. Let's see. Speed things up a little bit more. And let the ambulance go to a stop somewhere. Get the ring out the way. And look at that. Aside from the fire, there's significantly less damage here than the other vehicle. Like, if we look at this one, you see on this side, it is so destroyed. Like, it's past the axle. And then on this one, it doesn't really have any damage past the axle either side. And it can even drive. Surprisingly straight. It's not super straight enough, but it's straight enough. Can we drive onto the wheel? Oh, look at that. We could if we wanted to. I just lost my top, but yeah. This thing drives surprisingly well. It even has some capabilities left to it. Up into the wheel and we can keep on going with it if we wanted to. It doesn't drive very straight, so I know I can't stay on the wheel for long. And up, oh, well, it just got flipped over. How could you do this to me, wheel? I thought we were friends. Anyways, we'll reset this guy which actually crashed the game. So I guess that's the game's way of telling me that's enough at grid map. So let's go ahead and move on to Brutal Slope. It'll be easy to get the wheel rolling down the hill. The only thing is, is I'll have basically no control over it. It'll go in whatever direction it wants to. So I gotta hope that it stays far away from the obstacles, but still hits something interesting at the end. So I'm gonna bring it way over here to start. I know it's way farther than I normally go, but it keeps it like right in the middle of the obstacles. So hopefully it doesn't end up hitting that tube over there because that's Really, the only way things can go wrong is if we hit that tube. So we're going to grab the wheel, spawn it up, and I even angled my truck a little bit to the right to make sure it doesn't hit that tube. I really don't want it to hit the tube. And then we need a vehicle to kind of trail it along to see how fast it's going because the camera on the wheel is so bad. So let's grab an SBR4 for that. And hopefully we have the ability to stay at the same speed. I don't know, with gravity and all, it can be a little bit iffy. All right, we're going faster than I'm trying to keep it slow. We can kind of keep it there, but we're probably going to cook the brake. So it looks like it's going about 55 miles per hour. And it's interesting watching the shape change as it rolls. I have no idea why it keeps going big and then small and then big and then small unless the speed is varying. Like that's its max speed right there. And then it slows down because of air resistance or something. I really don't know, but it's interesting to watch it constantly change shape. Huh. All right. So speed right now is uh, nearing 70 miles per hour about. I got to. Slow this thing down again. Keeps locking its wheel so it's hard to see. It looks like, yeah, about 65 miles per hour is about where it tops out and it just kind of cruises at that speed. So if it has an impact, it's not going to be super dramatic, but maybe it'll hit that jump. That might be fun to watch. Or it's going to go right in between the two. We have to make it hit the jump. Oh, no, I've just made things worse. But because hitting the wall right there wasn't going to do anything interesting at those speeds. So I had to try something. Unfortunately, that something did nothing at all. And we could try putting a car in this. I just don't think it'll go very well because we're going to go so fast. We're going to fall out very, very soon. It's just too hard to control a vehicle inside that thing. I got to go at a pretty slow speed to actually control it. I guess for the car, we want something with ground clearance and four wheel drive. So if we fall out, we can hopefully get back in. So I'm, You know what? I was going to go with a D series, but a hopper smaller wheelbase might actually be useful here. So we'll grab the sports special. Yeah, we're going to try this thing out. I don't think we're too far down the hill, are we? Nah, we could go ahead and just fly up here, teleport it next to the hamster wheel, get on in it, and then down the hill we go. And we're going to see just how fast can we get. All right, now we're only at about 50 miles per hour. Nothing impressive there. Although 60 is faster than I've ever gotten the wheel before. 80 even more so, but it does not feel easy to control. It feels like it really wants to fall out, and I fell out. Also, at these speeds, it just feels like it's also going to tip over when I tried to go back in there. But there you go. There's an attempt at that. I'm sure with enough tries, you could get it down all the way and go really fast. But that seems very, very difficult, and I don't want to try to do that. Although you could try to see just how fast you could go on a flat surface. Like if you went to Grid Small Pure, I'm not really interested in that. I'd rather just see Leaping what happens when we go to Leap of Death and Brutal Slope. So We're just going to move the truck forward a few feet, stop it, and then swap it. So grab me the inflatable hamster wheel, and then we watch it roll. And the camera, of course, is going to be all wacky all over the place. 
The important thing is, though, when interesting things happen, I will manage the camera. And apparently this hill is very, very crooked. And it's going to roll off the edge. But what if you didn't want it to roll off the edge? Because, well, I don't. So we're going to make it not roll off the edge. We're going to put it right there. And it's going to keep rolling, hopefully, forward. It's going super crooked. I want to see it go off the ramp, though. And it has enough juice to do so. And now we just got to let the camera do whatever it wants until some impacts happen. And here is one impact. Got some good little deformation going there. Okay, back to it. And then speed along. It's going to be another one right here. I'm not going to do slow-mo. Can you see it from this camera angle? I guess it works okay as long as I'm managing it so it doesn't spin all over the place. I right, guess what I'm doing. I'm trying to manage it so it doesn't look like it's spinning all over the place like it would before. And here we go. Oh, that was actually surprisingly hard. And that's in real time? Hmm. Okay. It's all twisted up now. It's like an infinity or an eight, it looks like at times. And then other times it's... Oh, it's back. It fixed itself. It's amazing. Then I can keep on going for another one. This is what happens if I don't do any sort of changing to the camera. You see how it kind of spins all over the place and stuff? That's what I was trying to avoid. And is it stuck? No, it just snuck its way through. Wow, this thing really wants to go all the way to the bottom, doesn't it? We're going to follow it like this for a minute. It's harder to do this, though, because I can't go the same speed as it. I either go really fast or really slow. So it's really slow, really fast, really slow, really fast. You know, just trying to keep it up with them a little bit. It's actually doing a good speed, though. And it kind of looks like a treadmill, doesn't it? Like, when you just see it from this angle, it looks like a treadmill that just is flying for some reason. Oop, there's a hard hit. You know, I think it's going to actually make it all the way to the water. I did not expect that when I threw it off. I figured it would get stuck pretty fast because it's so big, but it just shimmies its way through things surprisingly well. Look at it go. Just right through that one as well. It's not even rolling the proper way. It's doing all this tumbling stuff. But there's the water, there's the wheel, and there's the video. So until next time, this has been YBR. Don't forget to follow me to go to the pet store to buy hamster wheels, and I'll see ya.